um, I have a little brochure that talks about it. You can read it. It's not going to be like that lovely product seminar we had before because although no, it's pretty colors, it works, it stays soft in my palette. I don't have to use as much water when I start mixing it to um, in there kind of arbitrarily. Scarf might not be such a good idea. <laughs> Looks good though. Doesn't it? Okay, good. <laughs> That's important. I paint a lot with my finger where I leave off, I come back to the finger. Kind of a memory thing. We've got a problem with memory. It's going to get worse, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm kind of doing the semi-line painting because it's a little faster. Imagine no. you can't do a lot of brushing on one spot. You might tear the paper, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So I am kind of just allowing the paper to suck it off my brush more than anything. Right. Okay. Now, if you cared that this vase not have any blue slop on it, it would bleed over, what you would do first is you would wax the vase except for the detail. Okay? My experience is that you'll make more mistakes waxing, you'll have more control with your paintbrush than you will with your wax brush. Once you have wax on the paper, it's there until we iron it out. This little paint palette that I'm using is a travel palette, also by Magell. And um, I got it for traveling teaching. And then I used to have a, a nice big Robert Woods palette that I really liked. But after I broke my hand, I switched from using a one and a half inch flat, which I painted like all the time with, to a round wash brush. And I can go much farther and longer with this brush than I can with my flat brush. And it also fits in these little slots nicely, so I don't have to worry about it. I don't know if I'll go back to the detail. I think I, I see in my directions what color is where, but for detail, here's a trick. If you don't want to bleed all over, take a tissue. Put it under the area you're going to paint. Then I can paint the orange. I'm going to give these guys orange centers. And When I use drier paint, thicker paint, it won't bleed as much. But then you get even a more color book look. And you put the tissue under for work purpose? No. Oh, I see. It's all here. Sure. The, the trick it. is, there's a trick, they got to take this tissue away. Because you'll be going, like, you forget you're doing the fatigue, and you go, in style. And it's like, oh, this is going really well. And then all of a sudden, it'll start to dry. 
Well, then when the paper, rice paper starts to dry, it'll suck up the stuff in the tissue still, and then it will bleed on you. Okay, so, get rid of that one. That one's used up. Use a clean one and go to another spot. Okay. These, I'm just going to throw some yellow on and then I'm going to use some olive green. I'm not even going to use green. It's olive green. And it probably cuts a little bit more to make this look really nice. But I know it's too big. The brush was still dirty, so I got a more of a limey green. That's just Now here I was trying to scrub the color. I think part of this is wet stuff. what these little doodads are up here. I'm going to paint them quick while just so we can get to them there. I don't know if you can see that, but these spots, the wax, didn't come cover. Well, that's the character, though, of the fatigue. Oh, I hope so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm big on care. It does. It, that's the nature of the animal. You just have yeah. to kind of accept that, you know. So it's nice for me. I can just can you get a slap baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's some green stuff here. Yes. Do you use pretty much the colors when you have to them? Yeah, I'm just and for the, for the most part. I pretty much use premixed colors. This is the first time I've used this a two green now. Usually I always mix my greens. But this olive green's off of grace. <laughs> Why did you pick the tissues from the yellow? Because um, the bleeds, I'm painting really wet. And so that sucks that up. So it didn't go outside my design very much. Once again, improving on Rosario's design. Um, I kind of made this like a wig one. So I'm just going to paint with the same blues, manganese, and cobalt. Okay. I'm not highlighting, if there's no, I mean, I'm not doing that. I'm just putting color down. You may have heard of Kathy George. Yep. She does a you know a lot, a lot of boutiques, and hers are much more elaborate. Um, part of the difference is she loves to wax, and she'll tell me, oh, I just love the waxing process. I hate it. <laughs> Too putsy for me. Um, she would probably have you waxy, you know, paint this paint the yellow flower, wax it, and then paint the red in center. Mm -hmm. I have no patience for that. I'm not careful enough either. Her paintings are fabulous. It's just that. Sean, you've done a lot of fatigues. You probably love the way I see you. What's yours better? <laughs> How do you find your inspiration? Coloring books. Okay, yeah. mostly the coloring books. Coloring books, yeah. I mean, I don't like paint from real life or anything like that. And when I, um, I've got to find a way to make it work.
Okay, so here's what I did. This is actually a design from stickers. Really obnoxious stickers in the dollar store. So I invested a dollar in the pattern and changed it up a lot. But I mean, that's what I thought. Oh, my sister went, You can't buy those stickers. God, you're not going to put those on your wall. They're ugly. Ooh, think of it as a pattern in the wall. Then it was okay. But what I did in this one was I painted the flower first. And because I have this background going on, if the paint scooted on the outside, it doesn't make a difference because I cover it with the next layer. And then if it scoots out over here, it doesn't make a difference because once again, it's even darker. So this is like a pattern that will always work because of how I design the, the, it's probably the creativity a little bit. I guess I'm not sure what colors I have. I, of course, haven't written in my instructions, but that would just be you know, I'd have to look them up. Talk louder. I, I don't think I'm painting the colors that I say in the pattern, but I'm filling it in. So here, here, here. It's one thing with fatigue. You've you got to pay attention. Okay. I plan it all out. I just don't paint. Oh, I'll go back and wax. I really do plan out my wax and diagram has to be all planned out because it's the wax is so permanent as far as your design. Um, having said that, I can show you how to cheat later on. Marking the then that, then that. Paint the flowers, did that. I used different colors, but that's okay. Okay. Now, if you wanted your base to stay nice and white, you could wax it out now because I'm pretty much done painting the base. But I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna paint the oranges. I finally switch to a bigger brush. Sharp calls this a number eight brush. It's probably more like a 12 or a 14 of those other brands. Everybody has their own thing. I'm going to wet the oranges, the highlights on the oranges, I'm calling them oranges because they're easier to paint than apples, with water, okay? So that paint's going to be lighter because it's already wet. And then I'm going to use the yellow. Once again, this is really strong pigmented paint. Good yellow. Drop this on, and can you see how it's kind of scooting together? Where I'm not painting the highlight because it was water, but the water, just a regular watercolor, water always wins. Okay. Oops, there I painted the same. Paint around the highlights. It might scoot all together, but it might leave a little bit of the. Uh, Way of the paper. And then I'm going to go to Vermilion. I put the color around the edges to make it look round. I'm still painting wet into wet, so I don't know if you can see it, but it's scooting together. Here's a dry paper. Here's a wet paper. Now, I can be kind of sloppy here because I waxed this out. Does it dry lighter or darker? It'll still dry lighter, like regular watercolor. And it actually will draw a light lighter because it's so transparent. So you think it's darker than it is, and then you find out all my paints on my board. The board I'm using is white board, like from um, Home Depot. So it's waterproof. It's waterproof, but it's got a slick surface on it and it's white. Otherwise, you'd have to paint it like freezer paper and mm -hmm. paint it with the shiny side up so you can see what you're painting on. If you're using your regular painting board, you know, if you, especially if it's a dark board, that's not going to work. And um, even if it's gator board, if it's the stain as mine, you're not going to see where you're painted. You've got to have the white around it. Water the paint, water the paint. Oh, 
most cookie time, which is just perfect timing. And then to, um, you can see it's scooting out here. I don't care so much that it's scooting out. I care that there's a hard line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet where it scoots up. Now, will that bring the orange paint farther out? Yes, but it won't give me a hard line. So in essence, I'm tinting the wallpaper and I'm tinting the vase to reflect from the oranges. <coughs> Just to buy my sloppy paint. Okay? We can go to fancy name. So whenever you do that, I'm always watching to see how this dries to make sure it fades out. <coughs> light. Um, then I'm going to darken my vermilion with a little lizard crimson. Just to darken it up. Like I said, this is pretty wet right now. I didn't paint all the way to the line. I don't want a white rim there. So I'm going to put water and I put paint. Let's just put water and see how it scoops over. drawing lighter, it's going to be all on your board. And then we come to, I'm waxing on a piece that I put in at home so it's dry. Okay. Now at home I'll be waxing this really carefully. <laughs> But to speed things up, I'm just going to wax like the outside edges, hoping that I'll remember that when I paint the background that I can't slap on the inside of the objects. When you're waxing, it's like with painting, don't go to the very edge with your wax. And then I'm going to paint the wine because I want the top to stay clear, right? You can tell I'm getting serious when I got my thinker out. <laughs> this is really important. 